Ever go shopping for the perfect outfit only to leave empty handed and feeling really frustrated? You are not alone. This is a very common style struggle, even with all of the options out there. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the struggle of not being able to find what you want when you shop and what to do about it. The frustration of shopping and not finding what you're looking for is real. My clients come to me and tell me that they have dealt with this for years and it is one of their biggest style struggles. And today I'm going to help you turn this around so that when you shop, you can find what you're looking for. I wanna mention that this style struggle of not being able to find what you want when you're shopping is especially common for perfectionists. And before you decide this video isn't for you, I want to mention that I spent most of my adult life not realizing I was a perfectionist and then listened to one podcast that changed everything. Likely you have some perfectionistic tendencies, we all do, and women tend to have them more than men, so my clients often have several kind of working in the background, making things more difficult for them when it comes to their style. So give a listen to what I'm gonna to share today because perfectionism might be a sneaky thing that's going on for you that is keeping your style stuck, especially when you're shopping. And I'm gonna share some reasons why this could be happening so you can really look in your own life at where you know this is going on and if there are specific circumstances where it happens or you know specific times or specific items you're looking for where it happens more often. And I'm also gonna give you some solutions so that shopping can be less frustrating and overwhelming and you can more often find what you're actually looking for. Allow me to introduce myself. If you're not familiar with me, I am Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. I am a style and mindset coach and I can help you build a wardrobe that you truly love wearing. Not a wardrobe that you wear but don't really love and not a wardrobe you love but you don't actually wear. It's so interesting how common it is for us to have clothing in our closet that we love but we don't wear and to have clothing that we wear but we don't love. So that's the work that I do and I do it with the special twist of paying really close attention to what's going on in your brain because I have learned after decades of doing this that the mindset is so, so crucial in solving the style struggles. So. Today we're gonna to talk about shopping for clothing and feeling like you never find what you want. So first I'm gonna start with the perfectionist dilemma because when shopping for clothing and not finding what you want, I promise you that there is likely a, even a little seed of perfectionism at play and it is getting in the way and tripping you up and keeping you stuck. How does perfectionism show up when you're shopping and cause any kind of problem? So there are a couple different ways. The first way I wanna mention is if you're a perfectionist and you have very, very specific ideas of what you are looking for and no piece is ever good enough, your expectations are so high and your standards are so high and no clothing can really ever even come close. Even if you were able to shop and did shop at the couture level and you had your own tailor on demand, there's still this sense of it's never perfect enough, which is a whole separate videos topic. Uh, we will go into that a different day about that feeling of nothing ever being right. But that is what's happening when you're trying to shop and you're not finding things that are working. In some cases, the perfectionism is showing up as I have this exact idea of the exact color yellow and the exact way I want the color to fit and the exact um, price I'm looking for and, and weight of the fabric. And it's there's just really no way that a garment can live up to that. And so it just sets you spinning, looking for this perfect elusive piece. The other way that I find it shows up, and I actually find that this shows up more often in this, that perfectionism shows up more often in this way. And that is, you don't really have a sense of exactly what you're looking for. You have not been specific at all before shopping about setting your intention on what you're really looking for. And so it's just a very vague, loose, kind of wishy-washy idea when you go to look for something. And so then you don't find what you're looking for because you haven't really defined what you're looking for. It's this vague sense of, I did this for many years with brown boots, tall brown kind of riding inspired boots. I wanted some, but I hadn't really identified when I would know, like what were the criteria for the boots that I would actually buy? I kept looking and not buying them and not wearing them season after season because I didn't own any, but I wasn't really clear on what was I looking for. I had a vague sense, a vague idea, but I didn't really define, I want a pair of brown boots with this height heel that are this color, that have this kind of detailing on them, that are this price point. And so I just kept searching and spinning my wheels in the direction of brown boots, but not ever actually finding a pair and purchasing a pair. 
So it can show up both ways. It can either be that you're way too focused and specific about what you want. And this often happens, I find with my clients, when there's a piece that they've let go of. And in their mind, if they can't exactly replicate, duplicate that piece, that favorite that they let go of, nothing else is good enough. And in addition, the other side of it is you're way too vague and you don't have a strong sense of exactly what you're looking for. So the looking just continues. The other thing that happens with perfectionism is the beautiful overthinking. So regardless of whether you specifically know which kind of boots you want, or you're very vague about your boot, boot search, if we're using boots as the example, the idea of continuing to think about it, well, but maybe there's a different pair somewhere else, or oh, maybe that heel is a little too high. Oh, I saw that other pair two weeks ago. Maybe I should circle back and go see, oh, now they're sold out. Now I should get on the wait list. The overthinking of it, will I actually wear them? Do I really want brown? Maybe I want black. I just saw a woman in black. What happens in your brain that continues to keep this search for brown boots alive is an excessive amount of overthinking, which is truly a form of procrastination. We figure as perfectionists that if we procrastinate long enough, something will shift. We'll find the perfect brown boot. We'll get an ad, you know, pop up on our Instagram feed that will show us the exact pair of brown boots we've been looking for. Or the yearning for brown boots will just fizzle out and maybe we don't need a pair and we're, you know, it's, it's a good thing to keep ruminating and obsessing and analyzing this brown boot purchase. That is truly a form of procrastination and it is just overthinking um, at its core. And so, I, again, I know that when you don't think of yourself as someone who has perfectionistic tendencies, which I did not for decades, then when you hear someone say that this is what perfectionists do, it's really hard to see yourself in it, even if it sounds so true that you're nodding along thinking, yep, that's exactly what I do. And I want to just mention really quickly that perfectionism isn't really a bad thing. It's not that, that you, you don't need to recover from it. You don't need to get over it and never look back. It, it's not a problem. It's not a, you know, a terrible situation to be in. It's just that if you don't recognize how those perfectionistic habits and thoughts and tendencies are holding you back and learn to use them to your advantage and to recognize when they're at play and be able to kind of take a step back and realize, oh, right, I'm trying to be really a perfectionist about this brown boot situation. How can I look at this a little differently and what can I do to solve it and kind of take my perfectionist brain, give that part of my brain a break and take action anyway? And so it's not that perfectionism is a bad thing. It's just that you, if once you're aware of it, you can work with it. So I think when you shop and you're not finding what you're looking for, one of the things that comes up often is that you don't really know your style. So if you're shopping, and again, there's this vague sense of, I don't really know who I am or how I want to dress or what's authentic for me, then of course shopping is frustrating and you don't come home with the perfect outfit or even an outfit that's okay because you're afraid to commit because you don't really know what you really like. And this is why one of the very first steps of style therapy is to define your style. We do in the style discovery process, we get really clear on what you even want to look like, who you are at this stage of your life and how that version of you dresses. Then when you shop, you already have more intention because you know who you are. And then to make shopping easier, once you have a defined sense of your style, recognize what you're really missing or what you're really looking for so that you have a very specific list when you go shopping and you're not just overwhelmed by all of the choices. You're really getting clear on, this is what I'm looking for. This is where I'm going to go look. This is how I'll know if I'm successful. This is how I'll know if a piece meets my criteria. And if I purchase it, how I'll know that it's going to be a good piece in my wardrobe because otherwise it's just such a big vast world of retail options and thrifting options that it becomes really overwhelming if you go in and don't exactly know what you're looking for. And I would suggest starting with just one item. Practice getting good at shopping and having it be successful. Practice having wins, even small wins. So let's say you're looking for socks. Start with something really small like socks that will allow you to find what you're looking for. I'm looking for a pack of new white socks that are all cotton, that are at least 10 pairs to the pack, and they're going to fit my size 10 foot. Once you find that, pack of socks, you are reinforcing in your brain that it is possible to shop and find what you're looking for, even if it's just socks. You can also look for evidence of this in other places in your life. When you go to buy gas, chances are you find what you're looking for. You find a gas station, you find the you know level of gas that you want to put in your car and you pay for it and pump the gas and get it in your car and drive away. 
Find places in your life where you have evidence of shopping working well. You go to the grocery store, you know what shape pasta you want, you pick it out, you purchase it, you take it home, you make it for dinner. There are cycles of shopping that actually work well for you that you have practiced and that you don't have any overwhelm and drama about is my guess. So look to those and recognize what happens differently. You likely know what shape pasta you want. And so when you go into the store, you have a favorite. You've specified, my family likes this shape pasta and we need this much to make dinner or to make however many dinners. So I know how many boxes I need. I know where to buy it. I know what shape. I know what brand. The same is possible with shopping for clothing. It's just we get all of this stuff happening in our head that makes us shut down and feel like it's just too overwhelming and I never find what I'm looking for. I see that there are three kind of common pitfalls that seem to happen when clients tell me that they shop and they can't find what they're looking for. And the first one is limiting beliefs. And I know that often women tell me, well, I don't have any limiting beliefs around shopping or around my style or around my closet or wardrobes or putting outfits together or packing for travel or going to special occasions or any of those things. And then when we get a little deeper into the style therapy process, they realize, wow, I actually do have some limiting beliefs. And I now recognize how those limiting beliefs are getting in the way. Because when we, from childhood likely, have practiced a thought for so long, it becomes a belief. And if that belief isn't something that supports us to do the thing we want to do, like be really good shoppers, then it's usually doing the opposite. It's keeping us from being good shoppers. And so if you have limiting beliefs around shopping, if you know you have kind of mall trauma, and, and as silly as this sounds, this is something that I hear often. When you were in middle school, you had some sort of friend drama and shopping at the mall used to be really fun because you would go with this specific friend and then that friend chose a different friend to go to the mall with. And now every time you go to the mall, you're not consciously thinking about that seventh or eighth grade experience, but your body and your brain remember that the mall doesn't feel safe because for a while, way back in middle school, it didn't. And so you've practiced this thought even without really consciously thinking it. And so to keep you safe, your brain says, stay away from the mall. It's way too overwhelming and something bad could happen. And don't you remember how terrible you felt back in middle school? It, again, it's not that you are consciously thinking those thoughts, but that is what's happening in your brain when you pull into the mall and you already think, like so many women tell me, I don't even want to go in. I'm already overwhelmed and frustrated. I don't even know why I should bother. That starts somewhere likely way back decades ago. So if you can recognize what it is that you dislike about shopping, what it is that makes it feel like you can't ever find what you're looking for, what happened maybe back as a kid when you were shopping with your mom or your grandmother or when you were in middle school or when you were going to find something to go on a special date, what situations happened around shopping that maybe have now become limiting beliefs that are running in the background that you're not even aware of. So pitfall number one, limiting beliefs. Pay attention to what happens when you think about shopping for clothing. What are those very first thoughts that pop up? Pitfall number two, overwhelmed by too many options. This is just a product of our modern day and it is overwhelming. I completely agree. I worked retail for over 20 years. I actually like shopping. I like shopping for clients. I like shopping for myself most of the time. And I also understand the overwhelm. So the, what to do about the overwhelm is to really truly seek out Two ways you can handle this. Seek out stores that you know work for you. And this, yes, takes some practice, but once you find them, usually for several seasons, you can stick with those stores. That doesn't mean that they might not change their fabrics or their shapes or their sizing, and you'd have to start over and find new stores. But for the most part, if you find that Banana Republic works for you, likely for several seasons, Banana Republic will work for you. Don't go into the mall and try every single store. And worse, don't go online and spend hours and hours looking at every single option for a blue linen shirt. Narrow it down and make life easier on yourself by being more specific and finding brands and stores that work for you. And then don't get swayed by all the others. Yes, there might be a better option out there, but that's a very perfectionistic way to look at it. Chances are most stores have something similar any given season, and you can find what you're looking for without having to exhaust every single possibility because it really is not even possible to do that in this world of so much choice. And the other thing is to make sure that you're narrowing down what you're looking for. Don't go into a store thinking you're going to upgrade your entire wardrobe from shoes to accessories and 
look for every single piece and find exactly what you're looking for on that day. Start small. Like I said, a few minutes ago, start with socks or start with t-shirts. I really want to find a couple great t-shirts or I really want to find one great pair of jeans. It really is too overwhelming to your brain and to your body and to your senses to try to go in and make decisions about a whole bunch of different pieces on the same day. So narrow it down. Narrow down your store options and narrow down what you're shopping for on any given day. As you get better at this, as you develop style self-trust and learn to be more specific and define what you're looking for after you've defined your sense of style and go into a store and you know be able to pick out what works for you, you'll be able to shop for multiple pieces in a day. It's not that that can't ever happen. It's just that if you're starting there, you're kind of setting yourself up for a shopping trip that doesn't actually end up feeling successful. Another pitfall that can make shopping feel frustrating is chasing trends. Trends change so fast and if you have any hesitation then you're missing the trend, then you feel frustrated because you missed the trend, now it's some new trend. When you go in it feels overwhelming because all of a sudden things are different and what happened to those pants that you thought were in, you know, the it, it pants and now you can't find those or there are new colors and you thought that red was in for the season and now everything's lime green. Chasing trends just makes shopping more difficult because every store has their version and it is a very quick season. And it's, it leaves you frustrating because you're not actually buying pieces that are going to last in your wardrobe and get lots of wear and feel timeless and fabulous for seasons to come. It's a quick hit and usually that feels bad before you even get your bags out to the car if you even find anything that works for you. Trends can be tough. Four strategies for improving your shopping experience. And I've touched on a couple of these, but I'm just going to highlight them here. Strategy number one is to get really clear on what you're looking for and to narrow down your search. So narrow down the brands or the stores that you're going to explore to find what you're looking for and to narrow down the number of pieces that you're actually looking for on any given shopping trip. Because what you want to do is to collect wins. You want to show your brain, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this. I'm getting better at this. This is actually possible for me to shop and find what I'm looking for. And so if you go in to too many stores or you go in with the need for too many things all in the same experience, that tends to lead to more frustration and overwhelm and not finding what you're looking for. So narrow down the stores and narrow down the items you're searching for and start there. The second strategy would be to focus on quality over quantity. And this matters whether you're shopping at the retail level or the thrift level buy the best quality that you can afford because if you're buying pieces that you really truly love and want to wear, you want to be able to wear them for a long time. And if you're buying pieces that are not great quality, you're not going to be able to wear them for a long time. And then you're going to be back in this cycle of now I need to go shopping and what if I can't find what I'm looking for and this is so frustrating and I'm leaving empty handed and I feel overwhelmed. If you buy better quality, those pieces are going to last in your wardrobe longer and longer. The top that I have on was thrifted. It was under seven or eight dollars. It is LLB linen and it, it's incredibly well made. And I have had it now for a couple seasons and I am certain that I will have it for a couple more seasons. So it's not about the price point. It's about really truly being discerning about buying quality over pieces that are not going to last as long so that then you're going to have to shop more often. Strategy number three, in addition to narrowing down the stores, be willing to try new stores. So if the stores that you've been shopping in are not producing the pieces, literally not producing them, the manufacturer, and they're not getting you the outcome that you want, try different stores. Not try 10 different stores, but pick two or three online or in-person retailers where you could begin to explore what that brand has to offer. It's very possible that part of the reason that shopping is leaving you empty handed and feeling frustrated is because the brands that were your go-to brands for a long time have shifted and changed over the years as have you shifted and changed over the years. And so what those brands had that worked so well for so long no longer works for your body or no longer works for your lifestyle or your budget or any number of other things. This happens a lot with women I work with where a brand like The Limited or Banana Republic worked great for them when they were in their 30s and working, but now they're in their 60s and those pieces don't fit very well anymore and they're not as well made and they don't love them, they're not their style, and yet they're not sure where to go, so they've been trying to make the old brands work. I see this a lot with Talbots. As women get more and more clear on how they want to look and how they want to feel in their clothing and have a really defined sense of style, Talbots just doesn't, Talbots and Loft are the two that come up the most often. Doesn't mean they don't have great merchandise, 
but they don't allow for a ton of personal exploration because they have very set ideas of what their collections look like. And so women start to branch out from those stores. So give yourself permission to begin to be curious about what other stores might be out there that you could try. And just to tag on to that, not only brands that you could try and stores that you could try, but what other shapes could you try? What other silhouettes could you try? What other fabrics? What other colors? What other um, you know combinations? If you always wore jeans and a t-shirt or wide linen pants and a t-shirt in the summer, maybe you want to try a dress. Maybe dresses are where you're headed right now and you're having no shopping luck because you're looking kind of for the wrong pieces. They're not the jeans and the, and the t-shirt or the linen pants and the t-shirt no longer feel authentic. And really it's time to lean into your dress era. So those would be things that I would start with. In addition, I would really truly practice the art of shopping with purpose as a strategy because so often shopping is sort of this, this habit and this um, kind of hobby that women adopt to, as a time waster and as a thing to relieve stress or to just do as fun or to do with friends. And when it just becomes a habit and a hobby, oftentimes we're mindlessly looking for things, but we're not shopping with intention. And so if you go in with an intention, I find that usually whether at the thrift level or the retail level, we start to kind of gather the energy and the momentum of if you're looking for for blank, usually you start to find that when you're shopping with intention. And again, this goes back to the limiting beliefs. If you're telling yourself, I cannot find a great white t-shirt or I can't find any pants that fit, that's what you get. And if you go in with the intention of today, I'm going to find one t-shirt that I love how it fits. That's my intention. If you go in with that intention, the chances of you actually finding that great t-shirt that fits so well that you love are way higher, way higher. I promise it sounds kind of woo and silly, and yet I've seen it in my own life countless times, and I see it repeatedly with clients inside Style Therapy, where once the mindset begins to change and the intention is shifted and the focus is, this is what I'm gonna find today, they they find it and they text me and they share, oh my gosh, look what I found today. I had no idea that this was even available to me. So, okay, and then I wanna touch just a little bit on the mindset because there are a couple mindset things that I think can also be helpful when you're shopping for clothing and historically you don't find what you're looking for. So the first one is let go of that idea of perfection. Clothing is not intended to be perfect. It is intended to be worn and enjoyed. And I'm not saying settle. I'm saying shift your thinking of if you've been looking for something that is perfect and that is spinning your wheels and making you feel frustrated and having you not have the pieces that you want in your wardrobe, I would ease the reins a little bit and release the perfectionism so that you can allow something that is incredible to come into your wardrobe. And I would also mention the importance of patience and being kind to yourself. So often when women are shopping, they are not kind to themselves. They're not kind to themselves in the fitting room. They have lots of stories and lots of um, kind of negative stuff swirling around in their heads. And there's an urgency. I have to find this top, so I'm just going to buy this one or I'm going to buy nothing and then I'm going to feel really miserable about it. Be patient. Allow this process. This is a relearning if shopping has been difficult for you allow this process to unfold naturally and be kind to yourself as you go and remind yourself that you are learning a new skill. There are women who are incredible shoppers. It is possible for you to be one too and just take it slow instead of trying to rush it and then feeling frustrated. And finally, on the mindset side, really truly look at it as a practice. Think of shopping the next few times you shop as kind of an exploration and um, a data collecting experience. And I really would even suggest, as I do for my clients, to really truly ask yourself some evaluation questions when you get home, whether you bought something or you didn't, what worked, what didn't work, what would you do differently next time? So what worked? Well, I found a great parking spot and I went early in the day and it wasn't too crowded. What didn't work, I didn't eat anything beforehand, so I was really hungry and really cranky by the time I got to the second store and I'd left without anything. What could I do differently? Well, I could still go early and I could make sure I eat something and bring a snack and I could have patience with myself and you know whatever the things are that feel like you could try them differently. You are learning a new skill. You are building a new muscle. And as much as we want this to be a quick fix, it and as much as it can be something that shifts rather quickly and rather drastically with just small tweaks, it also is something that we need to do differently in order to get a different result. And when we're just complaining about, I go shopping and I can't find anything and it's super frustrating, 
and that's the story we're telling, that's the result you're getting. Okay, and then some practical tips for trying things on and shopping and deciding and all of that. Try a lot of sizes and a lot of shapes. Don't limit yourself to what you've always done. Don't limit yourself to exactly even what you think you might be looking for. Allow a little bit of wiggle room. And I find that I worked in anthropology for over eight years, and certainly I learned this in anthropology probably more than any other retail I ever worked. Allow a salesperson to help you. They know their merchandise allow them to bring in some other options. Okay, say you go into anthropology to look for a pair of dark denim jeans that are a little bit cropped. Allow them to show you all of the options, maybe even some things you wouldn't have considered trying on prior to seeing them in the fitting room and try them on. You never know. And I often have clients tell me, I would never have even tried this on and now it's my absolute favorite. I would never have even looked at this. Thank you so much for showing it to me because now I wear it all the time. Allow yourself to know what you're looking for, but then try a few things out of that range and try a lot of sizes. Understand that sizing is so not regulated in any way. And so the same size in different stores can literally be a foot different. So allow yourself to try different sizes. Do not make the number mean anything about you because the more you can kind of expand your search in that way, the faster you'll find things you're actually looking for and love. Take photos and videos of yourself in pieces and then pause. I do this with my clients and I have them send me photos and we chat about them and we evaluate them before they ever buy anything if it's not an absolute full body yes. And so what this allows is for you to get yourself out of the store, get away from the frustration and the stress and the kind of pressure of should I buy this now, should I not buy it? And you can really truly look at a little video or of a photo, mirror selfie, where you can evaluate, do I actually love that piece on me? Because either thing could happen. You could get a little far away from it and you know have a little bit of clarity once you get home and you've had something to eat and look at the photo and think, I actually don't love that. I was about ready to buy that and I actually don't love it. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Or the opposite where you decided, I didn't find anything today again. And yet when you get home and you look at one of the pieces that you took a photo of, you could look at it and think, actually, I love the way I look in that. I'm gonna call the store and have them hold my size or I'm gonna go back over there after dinner. Taking a photo or taking a video allows you to get a different perspective, literally, and to then evaluate the photo or the video so that you can get more clear and collect more data on, do I love the colors that that store is offering right now? Do I love the way that denim fits, but maybe I didn't love that brand and I want to go try that a similar shape somewhere else? It gives you more to go on, which makes you a better shopper. And the last thing kind of goes hand in hand with that pause. Don't rush. Allow this process to unfold. Don't think that because you haven't figured it out yet, because shopping has been hard for a decade, it has to change in a moment. It might take a whole season for you to begin to purchase things and find things when you shop and bring them home and love them and grow the self-trust that says, oh, I actually have no trouble going to look for something and finding what I'm looking for and loving it and bringing it home and wearing it for a long time. We are rebuilding a, a neuro pathway that is more positively linked to shopping. If there has been the negative, I go shopping and I don't find anything and I leave frustrated and empty handed and it's awful, we're, we're changing things. So allow that process to unfold, allow it to take a little bit of time. And so the last thing I'll mention is what you really want to adopt here is what's called a growth mindset. Oftentimes when you feel like shopping doesn't ever produce the results on the pieces that you want and it's super frustrating and you leave empty handed and you can never find what you're looking for, what's at play there underneath is a fixed mindset. You have decided that this can't get any better. Your story is shopping doesn't work for me. And so what needs to happen in order for it to work for you is to begin to change your thinking from something that's so fixed and really negative and um, final, I can't find anything when I shop, to it's possible that I could find something when I shop. Because that idea of this is a pro when, when the fixed mindset is just firmly in place, then there's no room for a solution. Your brain can't even get to work on solving the problem because it just buys into your story. Oh, there's no solution? Great, we're just gonna keep telling that story. And magically and ridiculously, when you have that story so firmly in place, you don't find anything because the universe conspires to support the story you're telling. So if you can begin to stretch into the growth mindset of, yes, this has been a problem maybe for decades, maybe for your whole shopping life, and it's really frustrating and, and you want to cry about it, 
And there is a solution. There are women who do not have this problem. Even if all you found in commiserating with your friends is that everyone you know does have this problem, I promise you that this is not a problem for every woman, which makes it clear that some of it is mindset. Some of it is happening in your brain and it's a routine and a thought process that has been repeated so many times that it's just fact to you. And so that fixed mindset does not allow for you to solve the problem. If you can stretch into the possibility of, I can figure out how to solve this problem, and I'm committed to doing that, and it might take a little work, and there might be some frustrating shopping days, but I know there's a solution and I'm going to find it, that growth mindset allows that energy to be different around shopping so that the pieces truly start to appear. And if it were only my own world and my own experience, then I might be a little more skeptical and not feel like I'm equipped to really share this. And yet I have seen this with hundreds of clients where once the mindset shifts a little bit so that there's this idea of it is possible for me, then it starts to happen kind of faster than they can even imagine. And I know this because I get the texts and the emails that say, oh my gosh, I just found exactly what I've been looking for for the last decade. And wow, what changed? Pants are so easy for me to shop for now. Or what changed? I actually can find tops with a neckline that I love. It's not that anything changed except their mindset. Okay. As you can probably tell, I could go on about this forever. I fundamentally believe that perfectionism and our mindset is so closely linked to the struggles that we have in our wardrobe because I have lived with it in my own life and I have dealt with it with so many clients that I see how we get so stuck by the story that we tell in our mind and the perfection and the standard that we hold ourselves to, even if we're unaware of it. So I will wrap up here by saying that if you would like my help, getting a handle on all of your style struggles and really creating the style that you want to create, creating the result that you've been after for probably a really long time. If you're like any of the women who I work with, I do work one-on-one -on -one with women. Style therapy is the way we do that. Style therapy is brand new. It now has two levels. It has always just been one package. It now is two separate programs. There's a level one and a level two. Level one is essential style therapy. Level two is complete style therapy. There is a link down below for all the details. I offer a one hour free consultation call if you would like to hop on a call and have me help you figure out which version of style therapy, which level would be the best fit for you because they're they're similar and they'll ultimately get you to the style results you want. And they're a little bit different in their timeline and in their cost and in the way that they kind of work through the struggles that you're having. So if you'd like to hop on a call, you can schedule that at the link below. I'm over on Instagram sharing all things style and such. Um, so I'd love to have you follow me over there at Kristen Kane Style. And if you're not already on my email list, there's a link down below and you can hop on my email list. That's where I share things first and most personal. Um, so if you'd like to hop on my email list, like I said, there's a link down below. I think that is it for all the housekeeping. I always love hearing how the struggle affects you. So is shopping a problem for you? Do you leave empty handed and feeling frustrated? Or do you have the growth mindset that allows you to go in looking for something and come home with a whole bunch of treasures? If you'd like to learn more about perfectionism and how it relates to style struggles, this is the video to watch next. And I'll be back next Friday with another new video. Have a really beautiful week. Thanks for being here.